Hey, greetings. Welcome back to Sean's Irish Whiskey Shelf. What I have for you this evening is a new bottle that we've never opened before and two other bottles that I've had for a little while but haven't really opened and tasted in quite some time. So we're going to throw that into the mix tonight and we'll see how these three do together. So several weeks ago, uh, a viewer of my videos wanted to know if I had tried Rowan Co. I think this was a video where we talked about some Tullamore Dew, and she said that she loved Tullamore Dew, but that she had been drinking more and more Rowan Co. And I just happened to find some on a shelf, uh, about an hour's drive away from me, and as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to pick it up because if someone who likes Tullamore Dew, like me, thinks that Rowan Co. tastes pretty good, well, hopefully I'll think it tastes pretty good too. So we're going to find out. We're also going to look at Writer's Tears and uh, Keeper's Heart. So let's jump right into this. All right, Rowan Co. So this is, uh, this is distilled at the Rowan Co. Distillery up in Dublin. It is a 90 proof, so it's a little bit higher than your run-of-the-mill 80 proof Irish whiskey. And it is, of course, no age statement, but three plus years. That's the, the standard for Irish whiskey is everything is aged at least three years. This is a blend. So when we, if you recall, when we talked about single malt single pot still and single grain, the majority of what's on my shelves behind me are blends. This is a blend. In fact, all three of these you're going to find out are blends. Aged in bourbon casks. Uh, now, the original Rowan Co., pretty old. That name goes back to the 18th century. Um, so that name's been around for a while. But, you know, we talked about uh, in the last video, single pot still, and how prohibition really had an impact on the Irish whiskey distilleries. And that's exactly what happened to the original Rowan Co. In 1926, they shut down because they just financially couldn't keep running. The American prohibition put them out of business. So no Rowan Co. until 2017 when the, the brand was relaunched and here we have Rowan Co. So, let's see how this blend tastes. Hopefully as good as Tullamore do. Yeah, my, uh, my viewer is not wrong. I like that. That really does remind me of Tullamore Dew. But because it's 90 proof instead of 80 proof, you're going to get a little bit more of that alcohol burn. Um, that's, that's a really fine drop of whiskey right there. I could see that being a, uh, an everyday sipper. Uh, now, one of the things, interesting things about Rowan Co., they specifically put in the information on their website that this whiskey was developed and distilled for mixes in mind. So they got input from bartenders and they really wanted to focus on people being able to use this whiskey for making whiskey cocktails. That may be, but uh, there's nothing wrong with that for an everyday sipper. Um, entry point uh, or entry price is uh, is you're going to find this in the $30, $35 range. So it's got a lot of competition in that range. You know, go back to our Tullamore Dew, Jameson, Bushmill White. Um, so it's going to be in that price point. But uh, I think we might have to do a head-to-head -head one night. Might have to do Row and Co. and Tullamore Do. Just do a quick video of the two of those. Maybe we'll put Bush White in there too. Oh, that's fabulous. I, uh, I, I, 
I think I need to pick up another bottle or two just so I can drink it every day and not worry about what's on the shelf. Okay, let's go over to Writer's Tears. This is one of the first bottles of Irish whiskey uh, when I started to get away from Tullamore Dew and Bush Mills and started looking for other Irish whiskeys to drink. Um, I had heard a lot about Writer's Tears and how good it was. So I picked this up. My goodness, this must be three, four years old by now. Um, and I've been drinking it. So, um, you know, once I decided that Irish whiskey is going to be a, a passion and make a collection. I obviously stopped drinking it on a regular basis, but it's, uh, as I recall, it was a fairly good Irish whiskey, and we're going to find out here in a minute. 80 proof, like most Irish whiskeys. Uh, this is, again, like we said, it's a blend. You're looking at 40% single malt and 60%, they say, aged whiskey. Now, the interesting thing about this is the mash bill for this is a hundred percent barley so there is no grain whiskey in here at all just straight barley whiskey 40 percent of it is malted so very interesting uh, it, it kind of gives it a unique taste uh, aged in bourbon casks just like Ro and Co and um, they, uh, <laughs> it's interesting because I don't drink coffee. When uh, this is distilled up at the Walsh Distillery, when this was originally put together in 1999, it, it got put together because they were looking for the, the recipe to make a perfect Irish coffee. And this was the whiskey that they used to make that perfect cup of Irish coffee. I said, wow, this is, this is really good. Um, you know, maybe, maybe we're onto something here. So fast forward to 2006, seven years later, they were able to get the backing of a major distillery. And uh, I believe that was Middleton. And now they've got a little bit more push behind them so they can get out and get more distribution. Uh, so just interesting. Um, if some of you out there enjoy Irish coffee, if you've never tried Writer's Tears with your coffee, maybe you should, right? Okay, so let's take a, take a little sip of Writer's Tears. It's not bad. I think for my palate, I'm still gonna go more towards a Tullamore Dew, a Row & Co. This is a little bit heavier on that malted barley taste. Of course, that's all there is in there is barley and 40% of it is malted barley. It's not my palate. However, that said, of all of the whiskeys out there that have that flavor profile, I would say this is one of the least objectionables in my book. And, you know, by the time you put it in coffee to make your Irish coffee, you know, not being a coffee drinker, I don't know how that, that flavor profile goes together with the coffee. So if any of you guys do that, hey, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think if, if you try this with coffee. And where can you leave me comments? You can leave me comments right on my YouTube page. You can leave me comments right on my Facebook page. Look for me on Facebook, Sean's Irish Whiskey Shelf. I love to interact with you there. And as always, man, please consider, if you haven't done it before, subscribing to this channel. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. It'll help get the word out. And if you share my videos, and as always, take two seconds, click a thumbs up if you like the video. So. Uh, Writer's Tears, really not bad. Not in my book as good as, again, a Rowan Co. Tullamore Dew, but really not bad for a whiskey that's all barley, and almost half of it is malted barley. All right. Now let's move on to Keeper's Heart. 
This is pretty unique. Every single whiskey that we've looked at together has come from Ireland. It's a distillery in Ireland. Keeper's Heart is the first one we're gonna try together that is Irish whiskey. It has Irish whiskey in it, but it's not distilled in Ireland. This is distilled in Minneapolis in a former potato, yeah, former potato processing plant. See if I can do that without getting my tongue all gummed up. O'Shaughnessy Distilling Company, Minneapolis, Minnesota is where this comes from. Now, 86 proof, so it kind of sits in between these from a, from a strength perspective. This is a blend, but it's a blend of Irish grain whiskey, single pot still whiskey, and a third one, American rye. So that's why they call this Irish and American, because you're getting the, the grain and the single pot still, and they're mixing in some rye. Now, I will tell you, disclaimer, the more I drink Irish whiskey, the less I like my bourbon. In fact, I, am, I, I used to have a, a, an okay collection, a, a starting collection of bourbon, and I've been working that down over time and not replacing it because to me the bourbon just isn't as tasty or as enjoyable as irish whiskey again there are a lot more bourbon channels on youtube than there are irish whiskey channels so if you like bourbon you have no shortage of finding good bourbon channels it's just not for me but rye. If I couldn't drink Irish whiskey, I think it would be rye whiskey. I like my rye. Iowa Legendary Rye, Templeton Rye, um, Bullet Rye. You know, those are three. Uh, Basil Hayden. There's four. There's four ryes right there that I think of right off the bat that, that I enjoy. So this being Irish whiskey, my number one love, then blended with rye, my number two love. This could be interesting. And I have not opened this and tasted it in quite some time. So now that we've been tasting things together, let's see how this works out, right? Oh, and one more thing. See, thought we were gonna taste. Um, do you know who the master distiller is? For, for Keeper's Heart, his name is Brian Nation. Is that name familiar to any of you? Could be. Brian Nation cut his teeth at Middleton Distillery. Redbreast, Jameson, Middleton. That's where he learned the trade. He left Middleton came to the States because he felt that that was going to be an adventure for him and his family. And he went to work uh, at O'Shaughnessy, uh, two brothers run O'Shaughnessy, and put this together. So big, big name working for, uh, for this distillery. So, all right, enough yapping. Let's do some drinking. So, I really want to like this. <laughs> it's Irish whiskey, and it's rye, my number one and number two. I really, really want to, to like this. But I'm not sure that I do. Um... No, I, it's really hard for me to pull the Irish whiskey out. 
It's got a very strong taste, very strong, unique taste. I'm not sure that I can even pull the rye out. I think that if you gave this to me and I was blindfolded, I might know that it's Keeper's Heart because of the taste that's not quite like anything else that we've had on this channel. And it's probably not like any of the rye I've ever had either. I can taste a little bit of the rye, okay? I won't be that harsh on it. But I'm not sure that it's really hitting a home run for me. Um, uh, you know, I know that, that it is something unique and, you know, this is their flagship product. They have another one that is, uh, you know, the Irish base with bourbon mixed in. That's in a black label. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not sure, folks. I just, let me give it one more try. I really can't. Um, you know, maybe if you put it on the rocks, let a little bit of water mix in and maybe uh, release some other flavor, perhaps. You know, we drink all of our whiskey together on this channel. We drink it neat. I don't want anything watering down the flavor. When I go out in the evening and I have my cigar, and I drink some whiskey or some rye or some bourbon, I usually have it on the rocks. Uh, I don't, very seldom do I drink it neat. But I'm sorry. I, and this might, for some of you, this might be perfect. Um, but this is just not doing it for me. I don't think that this is one that, that I would drink on a regular basis. Of the three, Rowan Co. Wow, that is that is making a huge push on Tullamore Dew to be an everyday drinker. If they made this in a 175 liter, 1.75, like I get my Tullamore Dew, wow, then we'd be fighting words to see who we're gonna drink. Writer's Tears, yeah, I can drink it. It's not my favorite. It's got the you know that uh, the very uh, strong on the malt side, but. It's not bad, but Keeper's Heart, I'm sorry. I just, it's not, it's not me. I can't do it. So anyway, uh, that's all I have for you for this video. Again, I hope you got something out of it. Please, if you ha find some time, let me know what you're drinking. Drop me a note on Facebook or on the YouTube channel. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know what you're drinking. Maybe you have an idea for something else you'd like me to try and compare against something else on my shelf. Um, you only see two of the shelves back here. Top shelf, you've got the spots, you've got the red breasts, uh, you've got the Jamesons, um, Teeling is up there. So, you know, I've, I've got quite a few bottles that we can pull out and taste. But, you know, let me know what you're drinking and as always, enjoy your Irish whiskey. It's never a bad reason to drink Irish whiskey. Any reason's a good reason, but do so responsibly so you're here for the next video. And until we meet again, I'd like you to be well and be safe. Sláinte. Bye now. <laughs>